Job chapter 6 and beginning at verse number 8. Good, good job today. Amen. Job chapter 6. Look at verse number 8. Let's start there. We are familiar with Job and the lifestyle that he lived and what he had gone through from studying the book of Job. The Bible says in chapter 1 of the book of Job, you don't have to turn there, that Job was a righteous man. The Bible even says he was perfect and upright and feared God and he did, did positive himself to stay away from all kinds of evil. There was something important about Job that, that really caught the attention of God Almighty. Matter of fact, the lifestyle of Job was so unique that even God will, would, would tell us that, uh, look, the devil was walking up and down the earth with that kind of power and just told the devil, now you want somebody to tell us, try my servant Job. I'm confident in him that he will talk about you right in your face. You're not going to have a problem with Job not wanting to come to church. You're not going to have a problem with Job sitting in church every night being happy. You're not going to have a problem with Job cursing people out. Listen, this man is living a perfect and upright life, and he excuses himself of every kind of evil. You're not going to have Job have a problem with his wife and children leaving them. That's not Job. I tell you what, you want to try something out? Try him. Go on over there. Go on and try that man. And, and, and see if he won't, won't puke you right in, in your face about who he is and that he believes in me as his father and as his God. So, you know, so Job, Job is that kind of man. And even though that God can give a person the ability to live a righteous life, even God knows that there are things involved in this world that are imperfect. And that means that as we live in a world like we live in, we will come across situations where we will end up being tarnished by that which is around us. And what does God do? God uses those things to make us who we are. Yes. Now, the concept, if you don't mind, in chapter 6 and verse number 8, listen to the reading and see if you can buy into what God is speaking when he wrote this inspirational text. All that I might have my request. And Job is talking now, and God, the, 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 the men of God, are writing down by inspiration what Job is saying. And Job says, oh, Lord, that I might have my request. I, I got to talk to you about something. Yes, I've been going through all of these troubles and these trials, and, and, and nobody says, but he said that I might have my request, and that God, you would grant me the thing that I long for. You hear that word? I long for something, and what is the joke that you long for? Even that it would please God to destroy me. I'm tired of you. I'm ready to give up. I can't handle this anymore. And you done put me in a situation that, that look here, go on and take my life. And then nobody says here, go ahead and destroy me, that I, uh, that even you will lose your hand and cut me off. In other words, he said, your hand is so great. Go on and let go, let go. in pain, and yet he telling God, let go and let me die. I'm ready to give up. And then he says in verse 10, then should I yet have comfort. And he said he's going to find comfort in him giving up. Dying. Leaving this earth. And yet I will harden myself in sorrow. And let me not spare, for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. What's my strength that I should hope? I don't have no hope. And what is my end that I should prolong my life? I don't have a life. Is my strength the strength of a stone? No. Or the flesh of brass? It's not my help in me. And the, is wisdom driven quite from me? Look at chapter 7 and look down at verse number 5. He says, My flesh is clothed with words and clouds of dust. And my skin is broken and become awesome. And my days is swifter, swifter than a weaver's being, and, and, and I spin without hope. And remember that my life is wind, and my eye shall no more see good. And the eyes of him that have seen me shall see me no more. Thine eyes are upon me, and I am not. What, what tragic, what tragical words from a person, a human. And this man is human just like you and I. Right. Mm. 
They said to be holding on even when you feel like giving up. Wow. Holding on even when you feel. You can never take away from people the feeling of giving up when they, you know, they, they, they feel no hope within them. Job, even though the Bible says that God had trusted in him, this man had reached a climax in his life that he was ready to give up. And, and, and the thing about that is that even though things come upon us, it's no reason to give up. And a lot of us are sitting out in this audience because somehow there are decisions that we are made and, 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 and decisions that we have uh, decided to do. And what happened is that we have reached a plateau and God has put us in position and rightly so. He has that right. And yet at the time, we now feel as if we want to give up on a, civil, a situation. We, 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 don't, we don't think about what all we have done and who we've hurt and all the things that we've done. We don't think about stuff like that. But God has to pay penalty for something that we do that's contrary to his will. Let me, let, me, let, me intro, let me introduce you to, first of all, the breakdown of this situation here. You see, do you ever feel like giving up? Do you ever feel that, that moment when you give up? Have you ever been in a situation where your mom and dad have left you and you have no hope, you didn't feel like anybody? Have you ever been in a situation where there's no money coming in and it seems like no job and no home and no car? Have uh, you ever been in a situation like that? Uh, are you in a situation right now that you feel like you can't find the job, uh, 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 even someone don't love you, well, the possibility is that that type of psychological profile can easily push you into a, what you call a hopeless situation. Yeah. It's, 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 it's normal. It's normal to begin to feel hopeless, and, and even it's normal for you to feel like I'm going to leave this world because it's no hope for me living here. And just, just walk away from all that you have, have, have lived for, and get out the door, and, and don't ever come back to your situation. In strange situations like that, understand that people sometimes, they began to feel this emotional pain and they, they feel that, that nobody cares and no one can help them in a moment. situation. Job is an example who tells us that he wanted to give up even though there was despair, he wanted to give up. He wanted to lose hope. He wanted to see that ah, I'm tired of life. I just want to let fall out of my head. Take my life, God. He asked him the creator. He's asking the omnipotent God to take his life. What relevance does Job have on our life today? What should we care? And, and what should we feel about this man, Job? What he went through? Can I deal with Job? Oh, but hey, hey, the man lost a family. He, 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 he lost wealth. He lost reputation. He lost his hair. And, 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 but, but, but now we, 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 don't, we don't understand things like that. But, but that temptation also comes to us. You need to hold on. Even when you feel like you're done. You can't remove the feeling of you're done. Because see, when things are not going well, you don't always want to feel like you want to give up on something. But you can't give up. Why? Because you're giving up and committing suicide, it automatically puts you on the low end of God's understanding. And when you get on that end, God then, he cannot work for your behalf. Why? Because number one, you took the easy way of not trying to do anything. But now you got to understand now, in the story of Job, before we actually got three things I got to get you to understand, and the lesson is yours. I got to show you sovereignty. When you talk about holding on, even when you feel like giving up, you got to understand the holding on is mental. See, the idea, you're in a world that's imperfect, and things are not going well, even though you have not made it that good at all yourself. That's the thing, you ain't done well as well. And so you, you add to some of the fire, and God, God is a God who has to show you that he is in control of your so God has got a thing to say. Now, two, three, 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 just three, just three. Sovereignty, strength, and savior is the only thing that can keep you from giving up in any given situation. Now, how does sovereignty work? We've got to stand now. I want you to turn your Bible to Job chapter 42 and verses 1 to 3. I want you to see this now because, see, the idea about sovereignty, it talks about God's control of it. It speaks about when God controls us and we know God's control. Some folks say, well, you know what? I believe in God. You know, people can be having the worst time in their life and still talk about they believe in God. People can stop going to church and still say what? They believe in God. People can uh, curse folk out and still say they what? They believe in God. People can say, you know what? I love the Lord and still commit fornication at the same time. How do you do two of them at the same time? You can't do it, brother, sister. You cannot do it. When you trust Totally in the sovereignty of God, that means you got to relinquish yourself from that which is wrong in flesh and that which is evil. 
Now you got to understand, Job was a man that God lived in a powerful way in his time. And Job was a man that God told something. And what God told him was his word. Now I want you to, I don't really, and, 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 and brother, brother, let me show you how, how things work with us. If y'all don't mind, uh, I hope they can do this. If they can't, we have to go another illustration. But now, but, but, but y'all got, y'all got, y'all got Job chapter 42, right? Now, now, everybody pretty much knows what these things are. Do you not know what these things are? Yes, I know. Now, some say yes, some do. Well, if, if you don't mind, if they will hold that with both hands, really, these things are none other than instruments that helps you do what you call sit-ups. Matter of fact, you put your legs together, you just keep going up and counting. But this will hurt my strong illustration. If you don't mind, when we start off in a line, what's interesting is that God always starts us off in a way Well, he holds us with his power. He gets us in a comfortable position where actually he doesn't do it for us, but it puts us in just enough grip and hold where we can be able to walk and do something. Now, they, right now, God's power is holding me, but now it's just enough that if I'm faithful and walking upon His will, it's enough where I can be still do it on my own. See, so God, what God does is God, and you do a good hold on now. What God does is God does give us strength and power to do some things on our own, so we can be able to know and be confident that when we trust in Him, we still can be doing some things, trusting in Him, and He can still hold us up and keep us going on where we won't give up. The problem with some people, what happened is that God upholds us, and, and, and what we do is we, did, we redefine God's uh, definition. So what we do is, if you don't mind, the word uphold, and I'm, you, I'm talking about the subject that is holding on uh, even when you feel like you're not. No, what we do is we sometimes take off the hold, and then what we try to do is we, we use the up. Now what that means is that sometimes we, what we want to do is, after God has kind of walked with us a little bit, we think we can do a thing on our own. So we stop obeying God, we stop getting faithful, we stop coming to church, we stop living godly, we stop doing things contrary to God, we come to church when we want to come to church. So what's happening is that God then let us go on our own power. So what did he do? So he lets me down, he lets me down. So when he lets me down, now I'm fully on my own. So what ha what's happening is that I change and define the word that God has given me. God told Job something. In other words, God's always telling us about his word, what he wants out of us so we can be strong. Now, he wants to uphold us. Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 3, he uphold all things. You don't have to turn there. Just write it down. The Bible says he uphold all things by the word of his power. Did you hear that? The Bible said God uphold all things by the word of his power. So then if God uphold all things by the word of power, he gives me just enough room where I can be upheld, and if I'm staying with the word, if I'm faithful, he can uphold me. If I go to work, he can keep my job. If I'm dealing with my wife, my children, he can keep my family together. Why? Because he upholds all things by the word. He gives me ability to be happy and joyful. But now if I get if I get a little cocky and stop doing things that are spiritually according to God, what God does is and I I mark off the whole. Then what happened is, then I'm, I'm too involved in trying to do up myself. I, I, I just want to be up myself. I don't need you anymore, God. I, I really don't. I don't need you, number one, when I come to church. I don't need you telling me to smile. I don't need you to tell me how to have faith. I don't need you to tell me what to do in my life. Why? Because I learned up. I don't need your hope. I can do my own uh. So, so Job was a man that God tried. It's not that Job wasn't trusting God, but when God had faith in Job, look at your text, and he has the concept in, 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 in Job 42 and verse number 1 through 3. Give me a reason. Watch what the Bible says, because sovereignty, what sovereign does, and I want you to understand that, you got to keep holding on, church. Yeah. Even when you feel like it, mentally, even when you feel, you got to get it right. Hold on, even though you, when you feel, 